Well, March 31st in Cardiff, April the 1st in New Zealand is potentially, well, I definitely think it's the biggest sporting event on the New Zealand calendar this year, Joseph Parker taking on Anthony Joshua. So I've got the two wise heads of boxing in New Zealand to join me just to go through this fight. Monty Beetham to my right, welcome in, and Mike Angove towards the other end there. Start with you, Monty. Um, world heavyweight, title fight boxing. On the world stage, it doesn't really get much better than this. We've got a Kiwi in there. Especially when you've got a unified bout and you've got two guys that are undefeated, and I think that's what makes us so excited. It hasn't happened for some time, and, and I think having a Kiwi in there makes us really excited. And since we've been on that journey with the Mike, I think um, you and I are probably more excited than most. Yeah, I think so. In, in particular for me, what, what makes it exciting is you've got two guys who are clearly flawed fighters in a lot of ways. They're young, they're undefeated, they've had their troubles in the ring. I think Joshua's looked more impressive, but both of them have holes in their game that can be exploited. So that makes it an, an analyst and also a couch potatoes dream where they can talk up the fight and talk about the weaknesses of the other fighter and how that's going to come together. And, and that's going to be fascinating. Uh, you know, the walk the actual talk will be interesting. Yeah, and we're going to move off to the side shortly and get these guys just to walk us through the things to look for in the fight, what they need to work on. Now, Monty, Joe's been uh, roundly criticised over in the UK yeah. that he's got defensive flaws and all that sort of thing. How important is this camp to him? Uh, it's very important because I think over the last four fights, um, we haven't seen a lot of improvement in the defensive game. And we talk about both fighters being flawed. That is true, case in point. However, it's what you can do in this little camp going into it because we've seen from both fighters, we know what they bring. It's what you can bring uh, that is a point of difference. And uh, that point of difference that is unexpected could be the difference in this match, which could mean that you are the one that keeps you out. Uh, you're the, you know, you've unify some bouts and, and you're a very wealthy man and if for Joseph Parker if he wins this it's going to be great ongoing as well. Mike you're a former world champion in the kickboxing art as well just the excitement level for a fighter as, they, as they're getting closer and closer and closer to fight time how do you keep a, a lid on the excitement and not expend too much energy? Well look that's going to be really key for, for Joe he, he really hasn't fought overseas too often he's been in his hometown and he's going into a cauldron in Cardiff and uh, you know it's going to be an absolutely packed stadium there and he's going to have to keep that very very much uh, in perspective now two things can happen to fighters they can tie up and get overawed by the situation or they can feed off it and uh, and grow as a fighter because of that and uh, Kevin Barry's got to do a job here now he's been through it a couple of times before not only with Tur but also with Bibit Shamanov at world title level in front of big crowds and, he, and he's got to prepare Joseph mentally for that so he's at the optimal mm. mindset. See Joseph's normally on the the hometown advantage and he's on that side and they're screaming for him it's going to be the opposite here and if he does get stung a couple of times in the smash which I'm sure both of them will that's when you delve deep and think what have you got when the crowd is not actually trying to lift you they're going against you. We talked about him dealing with the height and we saw the big crowd at Spark Arena. I was lucky enough to be sitting next to Monty for that fight and I remember in the walkout and I thought this is a big test. There was thousands of people in there. He came out to his walk and so I got goosebumps. I couldn't yeah. believe we had a world heavyweight title belt in New Zealand as long as I've been following boxing and you and I just gave each other that sort of knowing look. <laughs> he dealt with it that night. How different from a, the big expectation of New Zealand locally to the big expectation of the world globally? Yeah, I, I think um, he does well for the expectation full stop. He's nice and relaxed. He'll be playing his music. He'll be dancing at the back. He'll have his entourage slash friends there, um, keeping him nice and relaxed. And that's something that Joe does really well, especially from a, a young man point of view. Um, the expectations from the world, everyone thinks he's the underdog. Everyone's ruled him out. So it's great for him to be in this position. Um, and, and I think he's going to want and use that as a force of him, uh, and a, possibly a, a weapon to go against the big man himself. Only one common opponent, Mike, and we'll do it in the, in the fight breakdown later, but Carlos Takam, he's a very different fighter to both of them. So can you weigh up Parker versus Takam and Joshua versus Takam um, because he's not like either of them? I think you can in terms of performance. Joshua handled Carlos Takam uh, with relative ease. He hurt him on a number of occasions. But Takam, because he's tight defensively, he's got very long arms, which surprised Joe when he fought him. 
uh, he, he was able to tag Joshua on occasion. There was the inference that Joshua was tiring. I think he was still in control of that fight, even though I think it was stopped early. But you have to take into account a couple of things. The fight with Takam was two years after uh, Carlos's fight with, uh, with Joe. So, you know, he's an older, aging fighter. That was really his last chance. Also, he wasn't the first choice opponent. He was brought in on late notice. And as much as you can say, hey, he was preparing in camp and he was ready for that fight, it's very different both mm. mentally and physically from... Uh, you know, actually preparing for the fight to being called in at, at last minute notice. So for, for mine, you have to take it on face value. Joshua certainly performed, but you also have to qualify that with some of those other elements. Monty, um, you mentioned it before, they've both come into this fight with a zero, no yeah. losses. One of them's gonna walk out with a one against the loss column. How will that affect the guy that loses with their future? Because they're still young guys. And I still say we, we often hear two-time, three-time world champion. Yeah, That happens because they lose and then come back and win again. It's not the end of the career, so whoever gets the loss here. Yeah, I think for AJ, if he loses, uh, the, the amount of support he's got behind him is phenomenal. And, and, and he can come back probably a little bit easier than Joe. Uh, with Joe, if he does lose his fight, it's going to be how close was the fight. Um, you know, would, would he get a rematch with AJ or would Deontay Wilder think, well, I want a shot at Joe and to show you that I can beat him uh, easier or... or, or or probably prettier than, than what AJ does. So I, I think both uh, fighters have got a chance to come back and, and fight. Obviously, Joe coming back to New Zealand is probably not going to be the place where he needs to relaunch his career. Will they like it? Because they've done it previously before they've got on the boat. Um, it's, it's a tough one, but, you know, when one that, that O goes, it's going to be pretty um, hard for one of those fighters because it's something they've never experienced before. It's all about the nature of the loss. If it's a cracking fight, a turn yep. throw fight, and where, where both guys are, are, are trading and, and one goes we'll out have on a, a trilogy, shield, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> a that, trilogy, more money. You know, that, that, that's, that's a huge difference. You know, Ali Frazier three mm. times, Norton, Frazier, uh, Norton Ali rather. Um, so that kind of fight will do nothing to damage either fighter's yep. credibility. Agreed. If it's a whitewash, uh, I think if it's a whitewash, uh, of Joshua over Parker, that's really going to damage Joe's credibility. If uh, if um, Joshua gets caught and starched cold, um, I still think he's got a chance to come back from that um, because uh, because you know anyone can get caught in the heavyweight division. Uh, that's something that yeah. he, he will be able to utilise the rematch clause too. Yeah, might, yeah, might add exactly, but. Uh, you know, this is a chance for Parker to prove he is on that level, uh, win or lose. If he has a cracking fight, it's far from over. If it's a poor performance, then there's a lot of rebuilding to do. So much to look forward to, and it's uh, in oh, April the 1st in the morning. There are a whole lot of options available on the website. Um, pick the rounds, decisions, gets knocked down and carries on and wins. A whole plethora of things. And we are also going to take Monty and Mike over in a different video, actually, a, di a different broadcast. And we'll break down these two fighters and give you something to look at and get their expert analysis on what's going to happen in these uh, 12 three-minute rounds. Uh, looking forward to it. Stay tuned.